so here we are back in uh, Uma Blender dot blend. Um, very quickly, uh, gone back to the default layout. So just so we can remind you very quickly, up here, if you click that bit and drag to the right, we can hide the um, UV editor there. And we want to expand this over here by clicking little plus. And as you remember, we've got our human female here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this on a human male. Um, simply for speed and ease um, you can follow this on a human female just bear in mind this might take you a little bit more time also when you uncover this the tools might not be there so you just need to scroll up and bring them back yay open source so on that note we now have our model in front of us the problem is is that if we go to our scene uh, we have our human male and we don't want to have all of this content we only want to select the areas that our content will cover now this is important you don't want to select too little and you don't want to select too much you always want to make sure that you are selecting the areas you know that your model will cover the reason for this is we're actually cutting out quite a lot of work with um, weight painting that I'll explain later on so for now I'm just going to click all scenes and change it back to visible layers so we've only got our human male up there now here is our man in object mode we're going to make sure he's selected if he's not already right click on him and then click edit mode when you do so the default in Uma Blender is this little uh, face select mode now down here if you remember we've got vertex line and face and for now we're going to use face select mode look at your model and think about where the bounds are going to be so for example my sleeve boundary will be here and here um, my lower boundary where my coat will drape to will come down to here and here so I want to make sure that I've got items selected down here and my neckline is probably going to be around this line just above this UV seam in red here so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to select the boundaries of each bit so I'm going to select the end of each sleeve um, the bottom where my coat is going to come down to and the neckline where the coat will come as far as and to do this in a really quick and easy fashion um, rather than go right mouse button and then shift right mouse button and select each individual bit I'm going to zoom in I'm going to hold alt and I'm going to press my right mouse button on this edge here in between the two sides which are going to loop and what's going to happen is it's going to do a loop all the way around so that both uh, faces are actually either end of this loop so now we've got our neckline and what I'm going to do straight away is I'm going to hide that by pressing H this might seem redundant this will make sense in a second uh, I'm going to do one of my sleeves first of all this is always the hardest bit sometimes it's best to change your view to uh, perspective and then what we're going to do is we're going to look at it from the back oddly enough for some reason our Uma's face backwards so I'm going to select uh, we'll say this join here and then this join here now as you'll see I just pressed alt and I didn't hold shift so it changed my selection to another one to do this you need to hold alt and shift and then it will select both loops and uh, that's probably a bit low actually so what I'm going to do is unselect that and select that one and once again we're going to press H and we're going to hide it so now we can see we've got our neckline hidden and we've got the edges of our sleeves hidden and then I'm just going to move down so shift middle mouse button and we're going to come down we'll say below the knee it's a coat with attitude so uh, alt right mouse button on this edge here alt right mouse button and shift on this edge here press H to hide now the reason why we're hiding this is because what we're going to do now is we're going to right click anywhere on where our coat is going to be once we've done this we're going to select everything that is joining this face now the advantage is by hiding various faces it means that anything beyond them of course is no longer touching this face so we're going to press control and L when we press control and L 
it will select all linked faces. The problem is you'll notice it hasn't actually selected the arms and the reason for this if you look down the left hand side here it selects um, the linked faces so all linked faces but the seam is a boundary and if you remember our arms have a seam going around so just to cancel that out if you press normal it will then include our arms and then what we're going to do just to make sure that we're all happy we're going to hide this as well and then we're going to unhide it with Alt and H and that will make sure that everything we've hidden is now selected now this is like the really quick way of doing it so you've now got your body selected um, but obviously if we make any changes to this we have a bit of a problem we don't want to um, essentially make any changes because this is our Uma editing we haven't actually made a new clothing component yet now what we're going to do here is we're going to duplicate what we've got on the screen so we press shift and D and you notice it goes a bit of dark grey now don't touch your mouse uh, if possible just yet if you move your mouse it will do this and obviously we don't want that we want it to be in the same position as our Uma if you've already jumped the gun and moved it it's fine because if you do uh, the right mouse button resets it to where you duplicated it if instead you hit the left mouse button it would have repositioned it in the new position and we don't want that what we also don't want to do is assume that we've already actually created our new trench coat yet if you have a look we've still only got an Uma human male mesh what we've actually done is we've duplicated all of these faces and all of these vertices onto the existing mesh so there's a second set of the same vertices and faces so if we were to change it by moving it by clicking the red arrow for example so it moves along the axis uh, as you can see it's still distorting the root mesh bad times so control and Z to undo so how are we going to take this data off of this we've duplicated it but how do we take it away the answer is simple press P when you press P you'll see it says separate and then what we're going to do is we're going to select the selection because what we're doing is we're separating the selection from its original mesh so we're making something new so once you've done that click selection and you'll notice in our hierarchy over here we've now got human male so if I go back to object mode quickly human male is our man but now we've got human male 001 and that is our trench coat not with all the editing yet but it's there this is what we're going to be working on so first of all right click and rename always rename it to something handy because if like me you're going to be really lazy and put multiple clothing files into one blender file that you keep constantly backed up um, you'll want to make sure you can find the different ones uh, quickly and easily so I'm going to name this human male trench coat also for anyone screaming about why on earth I do that uh, and place multiple in one file the reason is that then it's very easy to slot clothing on clothing on clothing so everything fit, uh, fits you'll see what I mean later on so main thing is we have our trench coat mesh now that we can do anything we want with so again as I said earlier last time we couldn't move it but this time we can and we're not distorting anything what fun so we now need to make a trench coat figure two ways of doing this one would be to enter into vertex mode by going edit uh, vertex edit and literally manually editing every last single vertex maybe hiding the human male first by clicking the little eye up here editing every single vertex moving it is redundant there's a quicker and easier way uh, to do all kinds of things in blender so what we're going to do is make our shape and we're going to use the same technique we actually used earlier so if you remember we press alt and right click and it will select any adjoining in a loop now if I do alt and right click here you'll see our loop actually ends at the top there's nothing for that to connect to and if we go down to the bottom we have a triangle at the base so there is no continuing loop because there's a point on the other side so it's not passing through to anything so our loop ends at this one and at this one and then shift and right click do the same for this if we delete both of those and select faces so press delete select faces we now have that part of our jacket and again we'll do the same down here so we'll press alt and right mouse button alt and right mouse button press delete delete faces done 
Now, if you do it uh, here on this edge, uh, do, 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 do. Ooh, missed that one. How did I do that? All right, so delete faces done. If we do it on this one here, you'll see. Alt, my mouse button. Now, because of course this has a flat edge on this side, so it's passing through, it will loop all the way around. So basically, it's easy to loop with squares, not so with triangles. It's possible, but works a bit differently. Uh, what we're going to do is again, we're going to delete, uh, delete the faces, and here, select there, and then these are all going to be shift and right mouse button jobs, delete, then select faces. And we're slowly starting to get something that's looking a bit more like a trench coat. But we're not quite there yet. There's all kinds of issues. It's a little bit too tightly fitted, uh, depending on how you want to take it. So this is where uh, I'm going to go over a few quick and lazy tricks on how to sort this out. Uh, by all means, though, do spend more time editing this. So for now, as long as you've got your human mail hidden, worry about editing your trench coat, making it come out. What I'm going to do really, really quickly, though, is the following. First of all, I don't like trench coats that are too firmly fitted at the back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter vertex mode. And each individual vertex. Um, the problem with not having another pad. I'm just going to make sure they come out just enough without looking like a little spike at the rear. That's fine. Just enough there, just enough there, and I'm going to have to bring this out. Now this is where we get to something interesting. If I move this one here on the right hand side of the seam, you'll notice not just that one moves, but the one on the left of the seam does as well. The reason for this is because we have something currently active called, if I click options on the left hand side, X mirror. If along the X axis, the green line, it finds another vertex on the opposite side, with the same Y and Z, or the inverted Y and Z, should I say, it will automatically alter its position, which is ideal. It means I only have to take one vertex and move it for each side. Of course, it's not always ideal, though. If you're, for example, thinking, well, I've got a lovely little trench coat now, but what it's really missing is spikes. I want it to look a bit like the Road Warriors. Um, and if you were to do that, for example, and add a spike up here, with X mirror on, it would add a spike on the other side. So what we need to do is turn off X mirror, and then we can have our individual spikes everywhere. Now I'm not actually going to place spikes, I'm going to undo that for now and turn back on X mirror. But what I've done essentially, as you can see, is I've moved all the vertices, so hopefully it looks a little bit less spiked. Not ideal by any stretch of the imagination whatsoever but obviously uh, I'll probably spend more time between videos just touching it up and editing it but you can see what we're doing so we're just make, giving it a little bit more space around the rear now we've done all of these but you probably don't want to do the same for all the vertices on the inside so what we're going to do is very very quickly we're actually going to change to edge edit mode and what we're going to do is we're going to select all these so right mouse button and then hold shift and select all the edges on this part of our rear leg now again because we've got X mirror any faces that have the same coordinates will and uh, rotation will again also be moved so if I move this back here we have the same on the other side so it saved us quite a lot of work and again that's probably a little bit too extreme I'm going to change it to vertex mode if you do this with that selected it will then just select uh, vertices so you can then have a bit more detail with your move so unselect that so so unselect again shift right mouse button anything selected will unselect when you do that so shift right mouse button so right mouse selects and deselects bring this back in a little bit more it's a bit to a bit of extreme of a tail and so on now I'm a little bit happier still not perfect though because of course as you can see for a trench coat 
it's quite a lot of space so I'm just going to bring that down a bit turn that more into an actual separation tighten it up a little bit then tighten this vertex tighten that as well actually and I'm just going to tighten all of these a bit more shouldn't be too much to go if I was really lazy I could do that just to do a couple so I can have the natural inward incline again Oop. Excellent, you select one in the back. If you do that, don't forget Control and Z will undo any terrible mistakes you've made. Uh, looking a bit like flare trousers too much, but you get the concept. So we now have the rear of our trench coat. And again, for the front, it's pretty much the same thing, but a little bit easier. Just bring that forward a little bit, maybe. Bring the bottom a little bit further forward. And then again, it's pretty much same process over and over and over and over. So it's a time consuming process, but this is literally all you've got to do to use Blender. So right mouse buttons, movements, and then when you think you want to move a whole batch a bit more inward in bulk, just select a whole lot. And you can move them in a lot tighter. And then move them in a little bit more like that. And then finally, the last bit is, of course, we want to make sure that our edges aren't too tailored. I mean, after all, this is a trench coat. So again, we're just going to expand these a little bit along this edge. The joy of X-Mirror meaning that I'm not having to worry about symmetry. Um and yeah that's about it so as you can see literally it's just now shift right mouse button few adjustments just to make sure it's not so tailored and we are basically about done for this bit only other bit we need to look at is the top now if you want to leave it like this uh, around the collar that's absolutely fine if you don't however of course we do have a few um, minor issues and how we choose to solve them um, is really dependent on how much effort you want to put in um, what I would recommend at this stage is if you want to add uh, lapels if you don't mind the fact they're not going to be too loose I would actually leave that for normal mapping and texture work later on I certainly wouldn't add them at this point if uh, certainly if the main focus is to make sure you've got something um, ready for Uma as quickly as possible otherwise you're going to spend an inordinate amount of time extending quite a lot of components so I'm just going to extend that there uh, you get the idea this is pretty mundane but all in all we now essentially have our model now what we want to do when we're happy we've got kind of a trench coaty looking type uh, setup unhide our human male again and we're going to see that the inevitable problem we're going to have at some point as has been pointed out before is clipping our trench coat is too close to our man far too close so what we're going to do is we're going to go back to tools on the left hand side and we're going to click shrink flatten which might seem redundant but what this is doing is it's moving all the selected vertices along their normals so in other words their outward directions so what's going to happen is if we increase the size rather than shrink it will actually push everything out in the right direction if we use scale it doesn't it actually increases the size based on um, the origin so click shrink flatten and move your mouse that's literally all you've got to do so you move your mouse and you adjust it as much or as little as you want if you want a bit more fine tuning press shift now what I would advise is with a trench coat, if you intend to render any actual model clothing underneath, is you give it quite a bit of space. Because what we're going to do is perhaps maybe link a few bits up up here. So, uh, actually no I'm not, I'm going to go rogue a little bit, I'm going to draw that down. because we want to make sure there's plenty of space underneath for other bits of clothing but also we want to deal with this other problem now 
you may remember I mentioned things about normals and UVs earlier on. If we were to look through this in a rendered fashion, it would not look the way we want it to. In fact, it would look far opposite to the desired effect. Sorry, about two seconds. I just realised I've uh, maybe made too much of an edit there. There we go. Maybe a little bit more relaxed. There we go. Now, if we change this to rendered, you'll notice a problem. Not much of a problem, but a problem. At the moment, we haven't got any textures, but also, um, if this was in Unity, unlike in uh, Blender, we wouldn't actually see the inside of the coat. We'd only see the outside. So if we were looking for it at the back from the front, there would be nothing there, and vice versa. Um, for those of you that have played games like Monster Hunter, it's why uh, they now, in the old games, they didn't use to material the inside or do anything on the inside, so you'd walk through and you could see straight out. Same with many games with clipping problems. So what we're going to do is we're going to change back to solid. What we need to do is we actually need to give our trench coats um, an interior. And we don't just flip normals because then we wouldn't see anything from the outside. What we're going to do is we're going to solidify our trench coat. Now before we do this, pause it if you want to make any more modifications. I've only done a quick rush job on the trench coat. If you want to go into more detail, by all means take your time, pause this video. Come back to this only after you have finished the design of your trench coat. So do not follow this step until your trench coat is complete. I'm going to assume if you're still listening though, you've got your trench coat exactly the way you like it, you've changed everything, you've moved everything, and you're happy with it. Um, I'm not exactly happy with this, it's more like some sort of baggy coat, but it'll do the job. So what we're going to do is we're going to click over here, there's a wrench. Make sure that's selected, in light blue. We're going to click Add Modifier. In Add Modifier, we can modify all kinds of things about... Uh, any selected mesh we have. All we're going to do here is we're going to select solidify. When we solidify it, what it does is it adds, as you can see, another, in fact I'm going to hide the mail quickly, it adds an edge along here and then it also adds another selection of faces on the inside. So we now actually have a solid 3D object, which is quite handy because it means you aren't duplicating and having to join by hand, it's just all there. The other thing as well is that you can really muck about with the thickness. So if you just want to have a really thick trench coat for some strange reason, you would, in this case, expand it even more. So I could go, if I cancel that quickly, I'm not happy with that. I want to make this the super puffiest trench coat ever. So now it's super puffy. Add modifier, solidify, and change my thickness to something horrendously ridiculous. If I'm not sure it's going to work, all I do is I view my human mail, I just make sure that the thickness isn't too much for um, the actual shape. We want to make sure the thickness never overlaps into our rumor. That's key. Um, but this is really useful if you want to do things like um, breast plates and chest plates, plate mail armor, all that sort of stuff, and you don't want to waste time. It's a really great way of doing it. So now we have the puffiest joke uh, coat known to man, choke coat, yeah that's about right um, when you're done with that the most important thing is you have to make sure you click apply once it's done, it's done I'm just going to, actually no no I'm going to leave that because it's quite a nice puffy coat uh, and you'll notice it will come up with this error modifiers cannot be applied in edit mode if you've left it in edit mode you need to come down here change it back to objects and click apply now, we'll say this amplified modifier was not first result, maybe as expected. It's because of this armature that we're never going to touch. Uh, that's first in our modifier list, so that's what it's worried about. Don't worry too much about that. We now have a man with a coat. That is our model. What we need to do very quickly, last thing before we finish the modeling side of things, so we need to just go into white paint. And we need to just make sure that we've got these bits all over. Now you're probably wondering, what on earth is that? 
Weight painting is all about um, what's connected to each part of the rig. So if you remember, we've got different layers here. I'm actually going to press shift and click the rig layer. And then again, press shift and click UML rig on there. And shift click on metal trench coat. Now you'll see we've got this trench coat here. And if I go to here, this red bit means any time the spine adjusts here, that bit will move with it. That is the main bit that will distort. So all those vertices will distort. Okay. If I go down to left shoulder adjusts, red means something will move greatly and green means it will move very slightly. So if the adjust bone on the left shoulder here, you don't need to worry too much about that moves, um, then that will also adjust with it. On the whole, because we've duplicated, you shouldn't need to worry about anything. There'll be nothing for fingers to worry about, for example. And if we go down to, uh, let's say, for example, the lower back, uh, you may expect to see something. We actually don't need anything there. What we're going to need is for the spine adjust, if I remember correctly. So there's all kinds of bones that will be attached. As long as it looks like there's a few which are supposed to be adjusted, don't worry too much about it. The one that you may panic about is you might see left up leg, left leg, and go, ooh, why are there no things for that? That's because anything down here is actually attached primarily to the lower spine, and it's also attached to um, the left leg adjust, which is really hard to find. There's literally a hundred of different things up here. So left arm adjust is there, right arm adjusts. Uh, spine adjust is there so all the adjusts are where the adjustments are being made essentially so as long as you click and adjust you should see something linked to it that distorts that's what you're looking for does it say adjust if it says adjust is there a weight painted to it or does there need to be obviously if it's the eyes then ignore it so again left out of breast very lightly done there if you're not happy with it, if you think that the outer breast needs adjusting, you can adjust it. Now, bear in mind, the outer breast is around it, not the main bit. So, again, head adjust. We don't need anything to adjust for the head. Should be quite fine with that. <coughs> One last thing for the time. We've checked that the weights are there. We now need to check the materials. The problem is with Uma... Uh, or more to the point the blender Uma is that when you duplicate it will duplicate these along with it now these are as you may notice the names of the slots in Uma but what they actually are in uh, blender is the various materials so the textures and everything else we need to get rid of these uh, on the right thing do not remove them from Uma Uma mail like I was about to um, if you go to Uma Uma mail trench coats uh, what we're going to do is, I'm just going to double check, they're not, uh, deselect them. Left click to select and deselect lines. So when they go this bluish grey, you know they're selected. So we're just going to reduce that. We're going to make sure that only these under human male trench coat are selected. We're going to right click, we're going to go unlink. The reason for this is we want to make sure that our trench coat is only using um, what we have told it to for materials. If it used a torso material, for example, it would only actually render the torso in the game, and it would associate with a specific material. It wouldn't necessarily associate with the whole lot because of the way Uma constructs its meshes at runtime. So what we want to do, as I said, right-click, unlink, make sure they're unlinked. Once they're done, you're going to be ready now to essentially material and UV, uh, UV even, your model. Now, it's quite a long go over, but hopefully that's been detailed enough or um, sufficient enough for even the most, uh, shall we say, new individual to follow this. So, hope you've enjoyed that, and um, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.